Hi, Karoti here with episode four of my podcast about my crochet work, uh, my art quilting that I do, and learning to knit. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back, and I appreciate you coming back to see what I got up. Um, leave a comment and let me know you're out there. If you're a new v viewer, um, check me out and... Uh, if you like what you see, subscribe or give me a thumbs up or leave a comment. And I'm open to constructive criticism. So if you got something you want to say to help me improve, I appreciate hearing that as well. So um, I didn't, uh, it's been about a month and I feel a little rusty. Um, well, I was rusty to begin with because I don't know what I'm doing. But I really kind of feel a little bit out of sorts. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to um, keep it moving. Um, and I've been up to some things, finished some things, um, and uh, got some projects planned for the upcoming year. I'm already thinking about it. Um, and um, kind of looking forward to my art and craft kind of keeping me going and uh, connecting with you all out there. So, um, if you watched my last episode, uh, you know that uh, you saw Carter, my grandson, and you know that I'm making my first uh, crochet sweater, and I'm, it was for him. Well, I finished it, and he was happy that he wore it to school the day after I finished it. Um, his uncle was joking with him about, where'd you get that sweater, that good looking sweater? And uh, he said, I got it at my Nana's store. He calls me Nana, or Nana, Nana's store. And uh, so, uh, with that attitude, he'll be getting a sweater from me every year. <laughs> so let me show you what I got, what I finished. It was uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces. The neck band was put on separately. Um, but the arm ribbing and the ribbing down at the bottom was crocheted as part of the, um, the whole piece. Uh, but I'm really pleased. It hasn't been washed yet. And um, so we'll see how it holds up after washing. Uh, who knows, may put it in the wash and the whole thing fall apart. But, um, I, I, uh, I think it should do well. This is 100% acrylic. I love this uh, texture that the, the stitch combination created. And uh, it was um, crocheting, making a stitch in every stitch, but alternating the single stitch with a double crochet creates this texture and I really really like it I think it would make a nice blanket as well but um, so but he was happy and I'm going to insert some pictures of him wearing it right here And, uh, of course, I was happy that he was happy. He was thrilled, actually. So, um, that's, that's my, one of my finished objects. And I steam blocked it. I, I, but, you know, the sweater, this uh, acrylic fabric really didn't, I, I mean, it, hold, it had a lot of body in it. So, um, it didn't really change much after blocking. Uh, and, of course, I was... Scary. <laughs> it was scary. You put in an iron over it. I did have something in between the sweater and the iron. But uh, I think it holds, It feels good. It feels good. The other item that I uh, finished is uh, my little small shawl or scarf here that I have. Uh, actually, I had finished it long ago. <laughs> but I told you I have... Uh, 
block phobia. <laughs> so I finally got around to blocking it as well and uh, steam blocking it. But I soaked it really well because it had a lot of curling at the ends. Um, and I think it came out okay. And this was just going to be an everyday scarf that I'd wear with jeans. Um, so, and it's called what? The Dragon's Tail uh, scarf. One end is small, and then it gets wider as it goes uh, toward the other end. And then you have the jagged edge, the, you know little points that kind of make the dragon's tail. Let me take it off so you can see more of it. So you can kind of see the dragon tail reference in the design. But, uh, and this was made, I crocheted this using um, a patent yarn that I got at Joann's last year. And this was a lot of fun because of the stitch variety in it. And, um, but it, it didn't really soften too much. It's kind of a little bit scratchy, but warm, very warm. Mm -hmm. It's a little chilly today inside the house, even though I have the heat turned up. <laughs> I don't want to give a utility company any more money than I have to. But, uh, so I did finish that, um, and I also, and I'm, I'm counting this is finished even though I still have two rows left on it, but it's a shawl that I was making, that I'm making for myself. Uh, I still have two rows left to do. This is the yarn I have <laughs> left to do it in, to do those two rows in. I'm hoping I, it'll be enough. Each row is over 800 stitches, single stitches, and um, I just hope it's enough. And I don't, I, I know I bought it at my local yarn store, but I don't want to buy another ball of that to just do two more rows. I'd like to do three, but to, to do two more rows. But this is it, and it has points too. This is called the Pacific Rim Shawl. And it also has these very narrow wings at the end, where they narrow. And they have these points, which is where my stitch markers are. It's five points. And then it narrows on the other end. The blue and uh, burgundy yarn I um, purchased at a local yarn shop that has since closed and it is a uh, Jojo Lands brand called Melody. A lot of stretch in it. A lot of stretch. And uh, all single stitches, every single stitch is single stitch in every stitch. No skip stitches. Um, the ends are very long when it hangs. It's, you know, way below my hips, the points. So it'll be good for wrapping. I think this is a good indoor shawl as well as uh, one to also wear out, either under your, clo under your coat or either over your coat. So I plan to get a lot of use out of this one. But... Uh, I'm, I'm counting it as done. Uh, you'll probably see it again in about two or three months. Maybe it'll be blocked by then. <laughs> blocking is, uh, I, I procrastinate when it comes to blocking and uh, love weaving in my ends, but blocking, uh, you know. So anyway, uh, I'm counting that as so close to being done that it's done. Uh, so, uh, Maybe not well done, but done. <laughs> so after I uh, finished uh, Carter's sweater, I needed to start on one for my granddaughter, Anaya. And she picked out this yarn 
It's a Karen Cakes, which I think is by, yeah, Karen, yeah, Karen, Yarn. Um, and she picked it out some months ago when they first came out. And uh, I started on hers. But I haven't gotten very far. This is only the front panel, front left panel, I think, or right panel. And uh, it's done in about seven or eight pieces, which I'll have to sew together when I'm finished. But this is the other side of the panel that I started. So it'll, you know, be all of these colors, so it, it won't, um, it'll go from one color to the next, but it, you won't necessarily have um, balance. The colors won't be balanced, because it's just kind of, as you go through, the color changes, and it won't get back to orange until almost toward the end as you can see so um, it should be fun she likes color bright lots of color and bright colors and I'm crocheting that with um, my clover 3.5 hook and uh, no 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 I take that back I'm crocheting that with uh, a 5.0 and yes my clover 5.0 so um, and I really like I said I really like these clover hooks this is the one I was doing the shawl with so it's a 3.5 so if you can imagine over 800 single crochet and I do mean every one of those stitches are single crochet and no skip stitches and, uh, and it just keeps getting wider and wider and longer. Actually, I kind of altered or changed up the pattern because I didn't want it to continue to grow long that long on the ends. So I just kind of stopped that. Um, like I said, the ends of, of this shawl, shawl it, they come all the way down, way past my hips. So it's a good wrapping around <laughs> a couple of times kind of shawl. So, but, and my granddaughter, she knows that Nana works slow. But I'm going to try to get this made. Her birthday is in March or April, March. And um, I'll get it made. Hopefully by then she can get somewhere out of it. She is petite for her size. And um, I'm not making it too big. But if I make it for the size that she should normally, if she was not petite for her size, um, it, it's going to be big. So I am That's it for all my projects that I've kind of been focusing on. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know I've been crazy, crazy trying to get uh, my quilt made that has to be finished by the end of December. Sewing those hexagons together. Um, on Instagram, I am Studio Corona. And uh, I'm just kind of showing... The, how the hexagons sewn together are growing so um, that's going to be my focus my main focus for December I'm still going to dabble in the yarn I got to do that <laughs> I'll insert a photo of my hexagon qu quilt um, being in progress um, so you can see it right about here Now to move right on uh, into my acquisitions. I've had a delightful November. I will not complain. Um, and basically it's been a month of to hell with my yarn diet. <laughs> but I'm going to start, before I get into that, I'm going to start with my magazines and books that I picked up. For 2017, I decided to go back old school for planning. Not that I did much planning, but I feel the need to now that I'm adding knitting and to my crochet and quilting mix. And um, um, I want to just go back to actually planning out projects. I haven't really done this since I, I left my studio in 2014. Uh, I left my outside studio. Um, which kind of forced me 
to do that. I knew that I was going to be there X amount of uh, hours per week, even less in the winter. So I had to use my time there a little bit more wisely. So, um, and also when I was a member, the two years that I was a member of the um, uh, co-op gallery, uh, really uh, kind of focused me back to uh, doing, keeping track of planning. But since those two years, I've been kind of out of sorts, just kind of free floating through. But I feel the need now to stop doing that and to try to um, plan out my projects and put a self-imposed deadline. Uh, also to include my Corona University School of Art. Um, and uh, for newer newcomers or new viewers, um, that's my Corona School of Art is my self-created university where I actually pull books off my shelf to work with my art books, my in process, my instructional books to work with. I've been buying them since 2005 and I don't feel like, even though I've used them and uh, I do use them, some more so than others, but uh, I don't feel like I can justify buying any more books um, until I really have fully explored and used the ones that I have. And uh, that's just in the name of being a better consumer and um, being more disciplined um, and uh, you know just face it I think after I'm gone my books are going to probably end up in you know at a charity store or yard sale or something I don't I want to be a good consumer of them and a good steward of um, what I feel are my blessings, and so um, that's why I'm, I, and, and it's a way to build in my fun. That's how I. That's how I get down. It's how I party these days. So I'm going back to a planner in 2017, and on top of it, I've added uh, this podcast. So I, I do want to kind of try to keep better flow of uh, how I work and how I progress. Um, so we'll see. That's that's my thinking all right <laughs> so the other thing I, I picked up was a knitting Vogue knitting magazine and I love every pattern in here if my skill level this is above my skill level okay um, but if my skill level ever rose um, this high I could make every sweater in here every sweater and I, I kind of my daughter jokes with me whenever we're at the grocery store together. She said, if I ever lose you, I can always, I know, I can always find you in the magazine now. <laughs> Looking through knitting, crochet, uh, and quilting magazines. So, and she's right. <laughs> she's right. So, I, I do like to flip through them before I bring them home because nothing's more disappointing than picking by in a magazine, um, a crochet pattern magazine and there's only one pattern in it that you probably could have purchased independently without buying the whole magazine. It just, uh, I just think that's such a waste. Uh, also what I got <laughs> was top-down crochet sweaters, fabulous patterns and perfect fit by Dora Orenstein. Uh, there is a Ravelry group um, and I can't think, I, maybe, I don't think it's called Top Down Sweaters. It might be, but there is a Ravelry group um, that Dora is in, and they have a group, I can't think of what they're making. It may be this sweater on the cover that they agreed to all kind of make as a group, as a crochet along or sweater along. Um, I have to go back and check. I don't think I have enough yarn in in my stash to do a sweater yet enough yarn of any single yarn to make a sweater um, um, but anyway I thought it would be a, a, a good book and I'm gonna watch the um, the group as they kind of progress and make their sweaters and, um, and maybe I'll get some encouragement to go ahead and try to focus on that but I do want to make more adult sweaters now that I did Carter's sweater and I'm working on um, Anaya's sweater. Uh, actually, it's a cardigan. Hers is it's called the Goody Gumdrop 
Goody Gumdrops Codigan. Codigan is what it's called. C O A T I G A N. Um, but, um, and it's a free pattern on, on Ravel that I found on Ravelry. But I do want to make more uh, adult size sweaters um, next year. So, and then the other book I got was the Book of Socks. And um, I think I do know where I, the, I was listening to the podcast called Potter and Bloom. I think her name is Emma. And uh, she recommended, I think she was the one that recommended this book. And um, one reason that I really am drawn to knitting is I think knitted socks look better than crochet socks. And that's just pictures, I'm basing it on pictures that I've seen. Uh, so I wanted to learn to knit. And actually I had a friend, uh, I have a friend, Valerie, and she's a long-term time knitter. And when she told me she knitted socks, I didn't get it. I really didn't get it. I was intrigued by it. Then anyone would knit socks. I'm thinking, we well, could knit anything other than socks, and nobody's really going to even see them. And but I think it's one of those things you have to know to get. And after she said that, I started. I kept. I I, I look. Keep my eye out on socks. And um, and then since I've been watching this podcast. Everybody's knitting socks and talking about. So anyway, I'm drawn to sock knitting, and I wanted to do uh, socks as my one of one of my first projects. And um, the woman at my local yarn store said uh, suggested that I start with hats, though, to uh, so I could learn about knitting in the round, which is of course what you do with socks. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I'm not as excited about learning to, I like crochet hats. So I'm not as excited about learning to knit hats as I am socks. So we'll see. Um, that's going to be hopefully another focus in 2017. I'm going to go ahead and go into my yarn and uh, accessories purchases. I don't know if you saw or if you've seen the... Um, uh, fingerless gloves with the crocodile stitch. It's crocheted and uh, crocodile stitch is mainly on the side of the hand. And uh, But I had at least 10 people who do not knit or crochet that but know that I do. I had at least 10 people, at least uh, 10 people, give me a shout out with that link to these fingerless mittens or fingerless gloves and uh, with this stitch and I thought wow so even my brother who was like he was like you know just he wants a pair anyway I was like okay <laughs> but anyway um, so I, I the stitch itself I had never I had never um, made I'd never so I wasn't familiar with it. But then uh, Furl's crochet hooks. They're a company that makes crochet hooks. F-U-R-L-S uh, Furl's crochet hooks. And um, they're sponsoring a crochet along of these mittens. Um, they just opened November, just started November 14th, I think, or mid-November. And they're doing this in conjunction with Bonita Yarns, which uh, I'm not familiar with Bonita Yarns, but I was really excited. And I um, I keep my eye out on Furl's um, website and their blog and Facebook page because I hope to one day have a couple of Furl's crochet hooks in my stash. I don't now. They're a bit pricey. Um, and um, I don't know if they're prizes at the end of this crochet along or not I can't remember but I decided to participate when I saw those uh, um, fingerless mitts I even had one friend say you know if you're interested I, uh, I have a friend who would like to carry these in her gift shop um, and I couldn't take I couldn't bite on that 
leave because I just don't crochet fast enough to do production knitting of any of any small amount. I mean, I'm sure a pair of fingerless mitts will take me a couple of weeks, if not a month. Just depends on what else I have going on, and I just can't, you know, build that expectation of it's just stress I don't need. So I decided to participate, and so I bought the yarn from Bonitas. Uh, like I said, I've never used or heard of them. And um, this is a number two weight yarn. And I'm thinking fire and ice. <laughs> I bought two skeins of each. And um, it's 328 yards of yarn and 50% wool, 50% acrylic in 100 grams. And uh, I think... They said one skein will make a pair of mitts. So um, I'm going to start that. They And they're sending it out. Um, each part of the pattern, I think, over four weeks maybe, or six weeks or whatever. Um, in your, and, and it shows up in your inbox. And I don't know if it's too late to sign up, but you may want to check it out. And like I said, I'm not sure there are prizes. I'm just hoping, like heck, there are, they, there are prizes. So, um, but the shade is blue sky and sunset. Ah, very nice, huh? So, like I said, I got two of each. And then, um, I enhanced my gray. I have been vibing on cool grays. And I don't have enough of them. I don't know what I want to do uh, with them. <laughs> but I just feel like I need some grays in my stash. And uh, I went into Hobby Lobby to pick up some Knitter's Pride. They're carrying Knitter's Pride, some products by Knitter's Pride. Um, and um, they had these at the end of the aisle. And it's incredibly soft. It's Yarn B Soft and Sleek Low Peel Fiber, and it's 258 yards. And it is, it's wound very tight. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a very tight twist on it. Um, and it says oh, it's worsted weight, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll, uh, with use and wear, it'll become a little larger but it looks awful thin for a worst weight I maybe a DK but um, I bought three of these three of these grays so that gives me uh, about 750 yards of this enough to make a shawl with um, and then I bought Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I enhanced my needles, knitting needle selection for 2.5. And I got these little tiny needles for my um, uh, sock knitting that I want to do. 2.5 circular and 2.25 DPNs. Uh, which stand for double pointed needles and the brand is Haya Haya which I don't think I've used I haven't tried them out yet um, and then I also got some larger DPNs 8 point millimeters um, and these are wooden and these are the Knitter's Pride so oh I also picked up some stitch markers and point protectors. Do you lose your stitch markers? I do. And I know they're just probably spread out in my different, you know, project bags or bags. I can't say they're project bags because I still only have the one actual project bag. I still use whatever I can find bags. <laughs> but I tend to lose them and they mix plays and I've had several of these, uh, and they weren't the Clover brand, but some other brand of these that snap shut like um, they remind me of diaper pins. 
um, break. But I bought the jumbo ones uh, because I'm going to do some jumbo size knitting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't like uh, working with the chunky, the bulky yarn is my least favorite in crochet. But I've, I'm going to try knitting with it and see if I like that any better. But uh, so that, and these are the bulky needles, uh, knitting needles that I bought, from the bulky yarn. So, excuse me, size 19, 32 inch circulars. Yeah, which is a 15 mil millimeter. Yeah. So, we'll see. It's a pretty big, pretty big needle. I've seen them bigger, but that's a pretty, pretty big, big needle size. And then, I don't know if you remember my friend Kelly, um, who sent me a box. I think I opened it last time, or shared what she sent me last time. Well, she sent me more, more. Yep, she's, uh, I think it's like her, um, her scrap yarn or her yarn that she doesn't work with. She works on looms, uh, knitting looms. And I guess some yarns don't work well on knitting looms or, and so I, I'm getting her leftovers and, um, what she, what she doesn't like when she, you know, you first start buying yarn when you first start out. And then you learn a little bit more about your craft and, you know, you know more, you do better and such and such. So she she's sending me her yarns that she doesn't want and uh, I'm very happy to take them. Um, this is a cotton yarn, 100% cotton. And I, I think I'm going to start crocheting or maybe even good practice knitting my own uh, dishcloths. And... Uh, I think my family's getting ready to come through the door, so you may hear some doors opening and locking and such. And then, that's the alarm system that goes off. And then she sent me this. And a Tweety one. I got several of these. These are, there is one that kind of has that tweed look in it. And this is the bulky yarn. I'm going to practice with that. Probably put it all on a cow. It's more of the tweedy, thick, heavy duty yarn. There's another one. I love that color. Well, you know, Saturday was. Shop small, shop local. And like I said, that means a lot to me after having my studio at, in an arts uh, uh, center for uh, five years and being a member of a co-op gallery for two. Um, uh, I appreciate that. And so, of course, I did my part and uh, went to the, the yarn store. I don't shop. I'm not a shopper. Anybody tells you I... Probably could desperately use some shopping, but I don't. I just don't. Sh I don't. It's not something I enjoy, and when I have to, I prefer to do online. Um, but I very seldom even do that anymore. And so um, I went to the yarn store. It was the first customer um, there, and uh, these are some of the yarns that I picked up. I picked up a skein of Vallée Lope in two different colors. And this is 100% wool. And uh, I have this one already, which is what I'm practicing my knitting on. And of one of the yarns I'm practicing my knitting on. And uh, it, how many yarns? It's 50 grams, 108 yards. So that gives me uh, 300 yards total. It's very, I think it's very scratchy. Um, so it would make a nice sweater, I mean a nice, um, uh, my thought is, a cowl or a scarf that goes on the outside of your coat. Um, uh, and it may soften up, but uh, probably not too much. Um, once I took, pull the, uh, you know, do the wool soak on it. But uh, I, I want it, it's very reasonably priced. 
and I love the colors. They do have a nice color selection. So I picked up two of those and last episode I told you there was a, a bulky yarn um, at my local yarn store that I saw like two months ago. And when I, I saw it on my way out the door, and when I saw it, the color just began to just vibrate with me. Anyway, it has stayed on my mind, stayed on my mind, and um, I mean, I could just feel it. And the color was a very vibrant red. And um, of course, when I went Saturday, it was gone. So I, I just picked up some other colors uh, because I had been thinking about using this using that yarn if they had it with that colorway um, but uh, in a cow that I wanted to make and it would also give me a chance to practice my knitting and the big needles that I showed you this is the yarn I'm going to use it on and it is Malabrigo and I tell you if anybody could get Malabrigo's dye secrets they do something with color that to me is just like no other. It is very deep, very rich. Um, uh, and, you know, I mean, and it's very incre incredibly soft. This colorway is called Purple Mystery. And it looks more blue there, but it's really quite purple. Um, really quite purple. And I bought two of these. The other one is um, blue, more navyish, and it's called Azul Profundo. And I'm thinking about putting both of these in the same cow. The pattern that I have um, is a free pattern that I also, um, that they had a sample made. Um, at the uh, yarn store and it's called the open work infinity scarf the open work infinity scarf so that's one I want to make and I've noticed they really have been promoting this heavy thick yarn this really heavy duty super thick yarn um, this season and uh, I don't remember that being promoted so heavily last season so I bought these two uh, yarns and uh, the big thick needles and my little skinny needles that I'm going to do the sock yarn with. All those came from the local yarn store. And then this baby, it is a Blue Moon brand, is Blue Moon Fiber Arts and it is 85% Polworth wool, which I've never heard of Polworth. Uh, but I'm going to look that up. And 15% silk. Look at this. Mm, just look at it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And this baby is 695 yards. Yes, it sure is. Yep. 241 grams, which is is 8.5 ounces and my little uh, yarn winder only does four ounces <laughs> so I don't know I may take it back to the um, uh, yarn shop the only thing is it's so dangerous um, for me to go in there if I'm not planning on making a purchase but they will wind my yarn I just I should have gotten it uh, wound that day but they were so busy setting up because like I said I was the first customer there and they were still kind of setting up for the um, shop small Saturday uh, shop local so um, but um, yeah I, I just love it I don't know what I'm going to do but a nice shawl a nice sweater uh, I don't know they had another one in the same colorway but it, Buying that second one would have definitely taken me way over my budget that I had to spend. But I loved, I just couldn't leave. I didn't plan on getting this, but I saw it and thought, with that yardage and the price, I was like, oh no, it's got to come home with me. It's got to come home. 
and these colors, you know. Yeah, I love it. So that was, this is my acquisition for November, and I'm pretty satisfied. You know, basically I just said, to hell with my yarn diet. You know, there's always next month or the month after that. <laughs> no, I'm not getting anything in December. No yarn in December. Um, no yarns in December, none. So, um, and probably not to spring. That's my goal. I really just kind of want to work with what I got. And because uh, I have a nice little selection for a beginner. I think a nice little respectable selection of yarn for, uh, I still consider myself a beginner. Um, you know, um, but anyway, I've been watching a lot of, uh, podcasts and, uh, I've gotten some great ideas, um, from other podcasters and, uh, and I'm, I apologize up front for not being able to, uh, write notes or take notes and credit those, um, uh, individual podcasters, but I'm just going to talk collectively um, how watching the podcast has kind of generated some thoughts in me. Um, some of the, There's a knit-along or make-along, um, I think it's a, I think it's actually a knit-along, based on um, the TV show, The Gilmore Girls. I have to be honest, I had never even heard of the show. And... Um, and then I know there was also, uh, probably over the summer or back in the spring, there was a knit-along based on Harry Potter movies or books. And um, all that has gotten me kind of thinking. I thought, well, if I was going to do such a thing, what are some of the TV shows that inspire me? And um, what came to mind immediately, even though it's a show I stopped watching the last couple of seasons, uh, was Olivia Pope, uh, the character on Scandal. You know, she always dresses in black, white, or cream, and um, uh, where's the hell out of her clothes, you know? She's styling, you know? So I thought, oh, wouldn't that be kind of cool to have it inspired by neutrals? I love working with neutrals. I like neutrals. Um, particularly, I'm vibing right now on grays. Uh, and I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to have something based on that. Then I thought of the current shows that I'm watching that I'm kind of keeping up with. Um, uh, Westworld is one of them. And then what came to mind is the um, woman that's the madam. Her outfit is um, all, the dress is always the same, that deep, rich, burgundy, reddish color trimmed in black with black trim. Um... Also, what came to mind are the colors of, you know, in the beginning of the show, they do this 3D printing of human form. And I thought of that. It's a milky white looking color. And um, I thought, oh, something that would include that color. Um, then I thought the other show I thought uh, was Fra uh, Grace and Frankie or Frankie and Grace with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. And I thought, okay, you can kind of be inspired by your more reserved, classy side or your free spirit, free-flowing side. Um, making something I can see, you know, um, something like that. Some other shows that I, I, I watch. Um, my, my daughter has me watching Insecure. And from that show, I thought, hmm, so, uh, I think it comes on HBO. Uh, I thought about the character's braids, the main character, her braids, um, that she's been wearing the last couple of shows. And it could be something inspired by cables. You know, cables to me look like braids. Um, what other show? Uh, I'm watching Queen Sugar. But I don't know. Nothing. I can't think of anything. Um course there's the name of the restaurant the high yellow uh, the inside of Aunt V's house is very brightly colored the walls um, I don't know but anyway those are just things I'm thinking I don't even know how to organize one I, I don't have no clue 
but um, but I'm thinking, you know, I could make something. What would inspire me to make something? Create a shawl that Olivia Pope would wear, or um, a shawl that I can see Frankie wearing, or on Frankie and Grace, or Grace wearing on the show. Um, um, hmm, be interesting. Anyway, those are just thoughts that uh, that have been turning as a result of watching other podcasts. Um, let's see. What else do I need to share with you? I'm looking at my notes here. I did, I did do notes this time. I really did. Uh, it may show. I hope it shows at least a little bit, some improvement. Um, I'll save some of this other... Um, this other thing, this other stuff for the next podcast. I will probably make just one podcast for the month of December. Um, and then probably not again uh, until uh, mid-January. Mm -hmm. Mid-January and then toward the end uh, of January. I think it's going to, that's what I'm going to aim for. Uh, middle of the month, end of the month. Middle, middle and end of the month. Um so, um...